So we know that cells require a range of different ways for moving things in and out. And a couple of them we've learnt about already, uh, diffusion, osmosis, uh, but there's some that require energy. Diffusion and osmosis are called passive processes because they happen without any energy being required. But there are some processes that require energy. They're called active processes. And there's a few. There's active transport, which I'm gonna talk about today. There's also endocytosis and exocytosis. This video is about the process called active transport. Let's take a look. So here's an example of a cell. It's important to remember that all cells are surrounded by cell membrane. And you might remember from a previous video when we looked at the structure of the cell membrane, this is what it looks like. It, here's the inside of the cell is here and the outside of the cell is here. And this is a small section of the cell membrane which would wrap all the way around the outside of our cell. The cell membrane is made of some key components like phospholipids and proteins and some carbohydrates. Uh, and it's important for things to be able to move across that cell membrane so that the cell can bring in the things that it needs and move out the things that it doesn't need. Active transport is one of the processes in which cells do that. So active transport, quite simply, a really easy way to remember about active transport and what it is, is to think of it as being the opposite of a process called diffusion. And that's one that I've talked to you about before. So just a reminder for you, diffusion is where substances move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until they become evenly distributed in a space. And that's a process that occurs in a passive way, which, mean, which means it doesn't require any energy, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you can sort of look at it in another way, looking at this graph here. So if we're talking about concentration of a substance, in this case, whatever this molecule is here. So here's outside of the cell, there's a higher concentration of this substance than inside of the cell where there's a lower concentration. This is a representation of the cell membrane. So what happens in diffusion is this substance will just passively move from higher concentration to a low concentration and there'll be a net movement of that substance inside of the cell. That's diffusion. But active transport is, as I said, the opposite of diffusion. In active transport, we're actually trying, the cell is actually trying to move substances against a concentration gradient. So in this situation, this substance is in a lower concentration outside of the cell. It's in a higher concentration inside of the cell, but it must be a key requirement for the cell, so much so that the cell actually needs to move it into the cell, even though there's already a higher concentration inside of the cell. So it's actually, it's in a sense, pumping this substance uphill, which, if you haven't already worked it out, is not passive. This process of active transport requires energy because to move something uphill is something that requires energy. And uh, that energy is usually in the form of ATP. And it's also why active transport is called active because it's a process that's moving something against a concentration gradient and it's requiring energy. And that's why we think of it as being the opposite of diffusion, because diffusion is where something is moving with a concentration gradient, and it's passive, which means it doesn't require energy. So here I've got a bit of a diagram of the cell membrane again, but now I want to show you one more key component for active transport. So what it requires is these things called carrier proteins. As we saw in the diagram earlier, the membrane's made of these phospholipids in a bilayer, but it has these proteins embedded. One of the roles of those proteins is to be these carrier proteins to help active transport happen. Now, here we've got, say, inside of our cell, where we have a higher concentration of whatever this substance is. Outside of the cell, we have a low concentration of this substance. 
but we're moving it into the cell. That's why this is an example of active transport. It's these carrier proteins which are helping to do that movement of moving this substance inside of the cell. And ATP is written here because it's the energy that's being provided to help actively pump this substance against the concentration gradient. So that's active transport. Um, obviously cells are selective about what they transport in and out of the cell. Uh, for example, at any given time, a cell might be moving one substance into the cell, say for example, some phosphate ions. And at the same time, it might be moving some substances out of the cell by active transport. Say for example, some sodium ions. Uh, another good example of active transport happening in our body, this is a very simple representation of a kidney. Uh, the cells of our kidneys are responsible for uh, filtering our blood. Uh, as blood passes through, substances are filtered out of our blood and then useful substances are reabsorbed back into the blood. Uh, an example of a useful substance reabsorbed back into our blood is glucose. Glucose is reabsorbed by active transport in the kidney cells. So that's been this video all about active transport. Just a reminder, it's the opposite of diffusion. It's moving substances from a low concentration to a high concentration, and it requires energy, which is why the process is called active. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.